Number 90. Spycraft, the great game. Here's another FMV game that I never got around to back in the FMV heyday of the mid-90s. Spycraft is a game I never actually owned until I started this list. It flew that far under my radar. And that's a shame because Spycraft is a legitimately rollicking good time, even if 95% of it is comprised of borderline office work. Yes, Spycraft has you playing the spy game as genderless CIA agent recruit Thorn. But you're not James Bond. You're not even Money Penny. You're an intelligence gatherer and an analyst, and only rarely does danger or action rear its ugly head. You'd best be ready when it does, but until then, you can expect to spend a lot of time analyzing photographs, recreating shot trajectories in 3D, reading dossiers, and learning about your target's habits and lifestyles. Yes, Activision managed to gamify the boring, realistic part of the espionage game. You spend most of the game Searching. at Thorne's computer, Match and it's fun. absolutely thrilling. Phillips. Thomas Jefferson. Part of the enjoyment is due to effective use of FMV. The actors are all solid, and the FMV doesn't form the backbone of the gameplay. It's used to serve plot details and instructions for the player, and little else. The other part has to do with how the puzzles in this game never feel like puzzles like doctoring a photograph to convince a prisoner you have someone else in custody, or analyzing the background noises in a phone call to determine the caller's location. They're all mysteries you must solve to further the plot. In other words, it doesn't take you out of the experience at all. The fact that most puzzles are solved in your office at your computer even adds to the immersion. The plot itself is convoluted and full of details, as you would expect a grand conspiracy to be. There are even some surprises and little nuances between characters. And of course, there's a mole, because there's always a mole. But it's not completely grounded in reality. There's a few goofy moments as well. All in all, it's par for the course as far as quality goes where old FMV games are concerned. You can die, and there are a lot of ways to die in this game. Trust the wrong person, say the wrong thing, fail to throw the exploding computer out of the helicopter, you know, normal adventure game stuff. There are also a couple of action segments where you'll need to gun down multiple enemies. It might ruin some people's fun, but then there is no spy game without danger. Most interestingly, to me at least, is that at the very end of the game you'll be called upon to do something distasteful to further American interests. It was the one time in the game where I wasn't sure what the right thing to do was, and saving that for the very end was a stroke of genius. As far as technical stuff goes, running the game was very easy, as it's available on GOG.com for a measly six bucks, and that version runs very well. I occasionally had issues where alt-tabbing out of the game would cause me to have difficulties, but it usually resolved itself after a few minutes. And the game crashed on me once, but otherwise? Totally worth the purchase price. All in all, Spycraft really is a great game, and I'd say it's earned its place on AdventureGamers.com's list of the top 100 adventure games of all time at number 90. And maybe it could have been moved up a couple of notches. 
I'll talk to Langley. See about pulling a few strings. Next time, number 89. Come on, Gage. Let's go. Yeah.